The question I'd like to start off with you today is, where is your love? Let me tell you about my experience. When I came to know Jesus Christ personally as Lord and Savior, He gave me a tremendous thirst. It was the most unusual thing that I ever experienced in my life. I had the desire to pick up the Bible every moment of every day. And I would find myself hours on hours, days on days, and I think for months, having a thirst that could not be quenched. It was the most amazing time of my life. As I look back now, it was a time that I was falling in love. And it was a beautiful experience because I was finding the face of God. I was learning about him personally. And I was also learning about the things that he wanted for me. I couldn't get enough. And I found myself where days would pass on days and the next morning I would pick up and start reading again. It's what led me to a Christian bookstore. What I'm going to ask you is, when you found that first love, what was it connected to? Was it connected to a specific church that you went to every Sunday or some books that somebody gave to you to read up and there's some great authors out there? Or maybe some Christian music that made you feel good about where you were? What was the connection you made that gave you that beginning growth? I want to try to reconnect you with a love. Where your love is placed with God is the difference between life and death. The Bible tells us of the results of people who would love this world and the things of it that love will destroy them. God says, you must choose. You have to love one and hate the other. I'm going to tell you that there is only one true love. And it may not be what you envisioned in the beginning. In John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Now, back in the beginning, way back in the beginning, where we can't even imagine, God and the Word existed. We know that God is a triune God that reveals himself in three ways. And one of those ways is his Word. And we find the beginning of the creation in Genesis 1.1. What I notice when I read the book of Genesis, you know the word God is repeated at least seven times when it says God said. I found that real interesting because whenever God said, that means he's speaking something into existence. It happens seven times. And then something is interesting uh, happens in Genesis 126. It goes on, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. You see, this is what John 1, 1 is referring to. The Word was with God in the beginning, way back in the beginning. And the Word was God. He spoke all things into existence, the Bible says. Now in John 1, 3, it says, All things were made by Him, and without Him... Now who's Him? The Word. All things were made by the Word. And without Him... Not anything was made. Now you need to follow me closely because what I'd like to show you is that your love may be misdirected. In John 1.10 it says, He was in the world and the world was made by him. Who? Jesus. Yes, but we didn't know him by his name yet. He wasn't born. So he was only known as the Word. So you see, it continues, the world knew him not. In John 1.14, it goes on, 
and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, that is who was there in Genesis 1.1, and that is who is here in John 1.1. Now, how do I know that? Because it goes on to say, We beheld his glory, that of the only Son of the Father. That's only one person. I want you to find what the focus of your love should look like. If you're in the pig pen, it is usually because one of two things. You either forgot what your first love looks like, or this is worse and maybe even sad. You never knew the way to find love. I want to make a point here, and the focus of your love was to be placed on the Word of God. If your coffee table Bible is dusty and your statues are well dusted, you've got a problem. When Jesus in John 14, 26 says, he will send you a comforter, what do you think he was going to comfort you with? A cross in your pocket? Maybe a picture in your wallet? No. He says at the end of the verse in 26, the comforter will help you remember my words. See, Jesus is still representing himself as the word delivered through the comforter. See, those comforting words are in the Bible, that dusty book you thought you could replace. With what? Well, with religious activity. In order to love Jesus, you have to be in love with his word. You have to be. John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words in you, you will ask and it'll be done. What I want to say is, if you think you're in Jesus, but his word is not in you, guess what? You're not in love. There's two parts to this. The second part is critical. In order to find love, his word has to be inside of you. In John 15, 10, it says, if you keep my words, you will be in love. Even as I have kept my father's words, and I am in his love. What a beautiful statement. If you want to be in love, his words are going to be in you and you're going to keep them. Do you want to fall in love? It will take something that is the hardest thing for you to pick up. The Bible. It's hard for a reason. The enemy does not want you to receive this. He does not want you to grow into what God wants you to become. I found an interesting verse back in the Old Testament. It's in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 2. Listen closely to what this is saying. She obeyed not the voice. She received not the correction. She trusted not the Lord. She drew not near to her God. Wow. If you're a prodigal son, it is likely these four things that are spoken of in this verse are what helped you get there. Listen, you obeyed not the voice. And because you didn't obey him, he was not able to correct your course away from the pig pen. Then it says, number two, she trusted not the Lord. When you were given the opportunity to trust the Lord with your problems, you didn't place them at his feet and leave them there. And because of that, what? Number four, you could not draw near to your God. Your first love specifically was the word. And if it wasn't, it needed to be. In the world, you heard about Jesus, right? But it was the word that touched your heart. Now, I asked in the beginning, where is your love? It is not in the pig pen. It is not on the road of religion or whatever religious activities you think you're involved in. 
it is back in the beginning where all this got started in Genesis known as the Word when you love the Bible you will find him again this is food that I provided to my family for years I want to now provide this to you I hope you'll share it with a friend if you like it I'll provide more thank you for listening and God bless you